I'm not sure if you're aware, but 2022 is over and 2023 is here. That's right, 365 days, baby, of brand new movies, brand new reviews, brand new commentary on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. A lot, lot of stuff here, a lot of fun. We're, we're having a great time. With that said, I think it's only fair I break down the big movies coming out in 2023, give you my excitement level. Let's begin. January is notorious for being a dumping ground for horrible films. No one told that to Megan. This movie is on the brink, on the precipice of coming out. By the time my video hits YouTube, this thing's probably a day or two from release. And I will be as well. That sounded sexual and it probably shouldn't, considering the context of this film revolves around a girl's doll that comes to life and starts killing people. Sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, it's familiar, that's Chucky. This is female Chucky. She dances, she twirls, she plays dolls, and she'll kill your ass if you get in her friend's way. I'm excited for Megan, it looks to be a dark comedy. The PG-13 kinda, kinda scares me, but uh, I think they'll be able to get away with a lot here. Looking forward to seeing this in just a few days and giving you a review. Knock knock, who's there? M. Night. M. Night who? M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong, dumbass, open the door! Because there's a knock at the cabin, which releases in February. This could go either way. It's an M. Night vehicle. It does have Dave Bautista in it, which also about a 50-50, whether it's going to be good or not. Uh, listen, I like M. Night Shyamalan movies. They can be awful, torturous experiences, but you know they're going to be different. You know they're going to be unique. You know they're going to have wooden characters and bizarre dialogue and a trademark M. Night Shyamalan twist and I'm all for it. Coming out in February is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania! I have almost no excitement for this movie. The first trailer released, I thought it looked kind of like ass. It reminded me of Thor 4, Love and Thunder, which is not a good thing. The first Ant-Man movie, fine, fun, solid. The second one, uh, that's how I feel. That's how I feel every time I hear Ant-Man and the Wasp. Okay. Fine, we'll watch it. At the best, I see it very mid. At the worst, well, we know where the bottom is, Thor Love and Thunder. We'll see you there. Yeah, no, no excitement for this. It's kind of amazing where we're at now in 2023. If you would have told me just a couple years earlier, a couple years Richard Pryor, that the most uninteresting movie on the February lineup is an MCU flick? I, I would have said no, that's nonsense. The, the MCU's killing it. Well, now they're killing themselves. Because we have Cocaine Bear, a movie directed by Elizabeth Banks, whose last movies, plural, were, were pretty big flops, pretty huge flops. I think the last one was that Charlie's Angels reboot that no one saw except for me for some reason. She's taking it up about 55 notches here. As a bear takes cocaine and is now slaughtering a town full of people, I'm fully invested in this. One of the actors is some dude from TikTok, I think, and he's hilarious. So yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with Cocaine Bear, can't wait to watch it. Michael B. Jordan's back as the champ himself, Adonis Creed in, you guessed it, Rocky V. I mean, Creed III. I'm not even joking, the trailer they released gave me very heavy Rocky V vibes. He has an old friend who's come out of prison, they're gonna rekindle their friendship, he's training them, but then he's gonna have to fight him at the end. Tommy Gunn style. He's got a kid who's getting older, he's showing her how to box. I'm a huge Rocky fan. I'm also a big fan of Creed I. Creed II was a disappointment, but still pretty decent. It is weird that I watch a Creed 3 trailer and I'm not on the couch shadow boxing myself, getting jacked up, getting pumped, taking a hit of cocaine myself and slaughtering the neighbors. That was maybe too much. That was too far. But still, why was I not excited? This trailer did nothing for me. The music wasn't hitting hard like it should be. Oh, you know what? It might be that Rocky's not even in it. What happened? I'm so sick of the drama with Rocky, how Stallone doesn't own the character, the studio kept pushing him out of things, and it seems like it's all over for him. Uh, they'll probably have him killed off unceremoniously off camera. Adonis will probably go pay him a visit at the cemetery, where his grave plot is right next to Apollo Creed's, and I will be sick to my stomach if that's how it goes down. Not really, that, that's too much again, but uh, yeah, I just, I'm not feeling this. I hope I'm wrong, I really do. Also in March is Scream 6, starring Jenna Ortega, that girl from the stupid Wednesday dance that everyone does on TikTok and on YouTube shorts and just 
fucking kill me. Yeah, Scream 5 was good. It was fine. Kind of a, you know, the soft reboot angle. Um, I don't think our main girl is in this one, Nev Campbell. I think she's out. She, she tried to get more money and the studio's like, nah, we don't, we don't need you. So I, I don't know if, is Cox in this? Is Courtney Cox back? I'm looking for the Cox to show up. But uh, I'll be surprised. They might just be going for the younger kids now. And um, yeah, we'll see. The first trailer has this whole subway theme. Like uh, he's taking the subway and killing people at all the stops or something. I have like tepid expectations for this. I'm not like a massive Scream fan. I enjoy most of the movies and I kind of walk away not thinking about them ever again. Another tentative March release is 65, which is a shorthand for 65 million years in the past. Adam Driver's character is sent Samurai Jack style to Earth, back to the past, where dinosaurs ruled the world. Prehistoria, mass hysteria, T-Rex, Raptor, Driver, it's gonna be wild. I'm kind of optimistic on this. The effects looked pretty shoddy. They look pretty sketchy. But I've been saying for decades, why does Jurassic Park have a monopoly on dinosaurs? Get some more dinosaur stuff out there! And it looks like my yells have finally been answered. Thanks, Adam. Driver. Also releasing March 17th, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which is Shazam 2. It was supposed to have a Black Adam cameo, but The Rock said no. And so do I. No rock, no ticket sale. I'm joking, I don't care. Black Adam was garbage. Uh, the first Shazam was, was decent. It was pretty good. A little long. Um, little kind of paint by numbers. But it was a fun time for the whole family. So yeah, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, I'll go. The next week, we are still in March, folks. The man, the myth, the legend, John Wick. He's back, baby. And he's angrier than ever. That dog's still dead, you sons of bitches. So everyone has to die as well. John Wick's gonna be doing stuff with the high table again. He's probably gonna be traversing jungles and swamps and deserts. Like, who knows where this is going? The whole thing has gone so off the rails, so Looney Tunes, and I'm still there for the ride. Uh, I thought John Wick 2 was pretty damn weak. 3 brought it back, but again, way too long for these movies. Make them like an hour and a half, an hour 45. Let's let's move this shit along. I don't need these like two and a half hour epic sagas of John Wick. I mean, it, it's kind of silly. And this, I believe, is a two-parter. I, I mean, I don't know what's happening, but uh, yeah, I'll watch him kill some dudes. Um, let's just let's just make it quick. Still in March, we have Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves. We have Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez, and Hugh Grant in this thing. It looks completely bonkers from the first trailer. They are taking nothing seriously. It's a, it's a very fun, very poppy, very vibrant, very colorful. Some of those words were redundant. I don't care. I'm running fast. I'm running loose. I'm running hot. Uh, this movie looks okay. It looks like a, again, it looks like a light, fluffy affair for the whole family. That's maybe not what they're going for, and this trailer is going to be completely misleading. But if they stay true to form, if they give the audiences what the trailer is explaining, then yeah, I think uh, we should be we should be in for an okay time. Now, if you're looking for a Dungeons & Dragons movie that's gritty, that's dark, that's serious, this looks to be none of that. In 1993... Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, and Nintendo teamed up to give the world one of the just awful, shittiest video game adaptations of all time with Mario Brothers. And now we're back. Illumination, Nintendo, Chris Pratt, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Day, Jack Black, Seth Rogen, other names are all teaming up again. But this time it's animated. This time they're doing it right. It looks fantastic, better than the games. The character designs are almost all really good. Mario still needs more of an ass. The guy's eating lasagna all day. <laughs> he doesn't have a Stairmaster at home. It's not like he's running down those pipes. Those pipes are, they're moving him along. They're automated, okay? Princess Peach is looking fire. She's looking good. I appreciate that. The voice of Mario is shit. I don't care what you say. Chris Pratt was not the right call here. I'm going to overlook it, I'm going to keep an open mind, but my first impressions are very bad because I have ears and I hear the words coming out of his mouth and it's like, hey, I'm Mario, I'm Chris Pratt. Let's-a go. 
<laughs> Mamma mia. That was too much. That was too much of an accent. I'm really looking forward to this film. My whole family's going to be there. The first movie we see in theaters together in a long time. Avatar was 7,000 hours long. They didn't go to that one with me. Um, so this is it. This is the movie that brings the whole gang back to the theaters. I cannot wait. 10 out of 10 excitement level. Uh, it's, it's, it's very high up on my list of wants. I know very little about the next movie on the list here in April. It's Evil Dead Rise. I know it's a remake of the horror classic by Sam Raimi. And that's about as far as I go. I haven't even watched a trailer. There's certain films that I know I'm going to see, but I want to go in blind. And horror movies are right up there for me. I don't like knowing a single thing about them going in. I want to be blown away. I want to be scared, damn it. That's the reason I go. That Sam Raimi version is freaking great, though. And I'm actually going to be reviewing it as a Patreon request in a couple weeks. So again, please subscribe if you haven't. There's fun stuff coming up. Mark May 5th as the only date where I'm excited for a Marvel movie coming out. That's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. James Gunn's back with the crew. Chris Pratt. Zoe Saldana. No, I said her name like that. Zoe Saldana. Dave Bautista. Another Dave Bautista vehicle right here. We got Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. Whole team. And it sounds like Adam's really getting his chance to shine. We had Black Adam in 2022. We have Adam Warlock in 2023. We have Adam Olinger on YouTube. Let's get all the Adams represented, okay? We need it. We need the representation. Share this with your mom. Share this with your dad. Share this with your shitty brother or sister. Share this with your friends. Post it. Tweet it. Love it. Accept it. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and 2 are both favorites of mine when it comes to the MCU. I know some people didn't like Volume 2. I'm not one of them. I even like that Christmas special they threw out. James Gunn gets me with his movies. I like all of his stuff. So, yeah, very excited for Volume 3. I know it's going to make me weep. Because, damn it, I love these characters. Speaking of well-written, Fast and the Furious 10, May 19th. Kill me! The last Fast and the Furious movie was complete and utter shit. I wanted all of them to die before it was over, but I know they're not going to because they're cartoon characters now. Strapping cars to rockets and flying off into space. Hook shotting around mountains. Catching people falling six stories up instead of letting them fall into the soft dirt. Because apparently, the hard metal of a car is softer than the dirt. I... There's just no logic in any of this. Vin Diesel had a brother out of nowhere. A movie about family introduces a secret brother nine movies in. He's gonna have a sister in this one as a villain? Maybe a grandpa who's like 110 years old? Who knows? Who the hell knows? I'll probably see it still and review it. Because I hate myself, damn it. Let's keep going. On May 26, the world changes as we know it when a black little mermaid hits the big screen. How progressive. I hate the Disney live action remakes. They're almost all either awful or passable. None of them surpass the animated classic, except for maybe Jungle Book, but that one's nothing like the animated one, so they're really different films altogether. But these shot-for-shot -shot rehashes are empty. They're dead inside, just like me. So when that Little Mermaid teaser hits, and I see, again, really muted colors, an ugly palette, and no, it's not because she's under the ocean. People were saying that. Uh, Adam, it's because she's underwater that everything's dark looking. Oh, okay. I guess tell that to the animated Little Mermaid, you stupid idiot. Because that's colorful as hell. Because it's animated. They just don't do it right with these CG films because they try to make them hyper-realistic. So the dolphins and the whales and the fish, they're not popping with color because they're like real, but not. Halle Bailey plays Ariel. Who cares? She's probably a great actress, probably has a wonderful voice. I just don't want to see this movie because it's another crappy live-action remake. Whether she's white, black, redhead, it doesn't matter at all in the slightest to me make good movies and i'll see them and be excited about them that's it that's the game now we're getting somewhere june 2nd has spider-man across the spider-verse i believe this is a part one of a two-part sequel to the original 
Spider-Man movie. I mean, kind of confusing with the naming, but listen, Miles Morales was great the first time around. I loved all the characters. Looks like they're all coming back with like a hundred more spider characters. The trailer was awesome. The animation is so lively, so wonderful to look at. Why is Disney not doing this stuff? Can we get more great 2D animated classics or this hybrid 2D, 3D, whatever they're doing? It's working for me. I'm very excited for this. Another one the whole family will definitely run out and see. Come on, June, get here. June is going to be a banger. Not only do we have Spider-Man, we got a new Transformers hitting June 9th with Transformers Rise of the Beasts. There's something else rising down in my pants area because I'm excited for this one. And we all know if you use Rise in the title, it's a surefire hit. Dark Knight Rises. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Maybe not a great example there. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Now we're back on track again. Mercury Rising. Kind of an obscure Bruce Willis film, but I'll allow it. Deep Rising. An even more obscure movie, but pretty cool. It's kind of like a B-list underwater survival story with this cool killer creature. I'm off base. Let's talk about this. I think Transformers Rise of the Beast is the right call. Get us down to basics again. Maybe you don't have like 15 plots going on. Keep it simple would be nice. I don't believe Michael Bay is directing, which also helps. He's, he's done enough with that franchise. Let's get more of the Bumblebee quality. Maybe with a little bit more action. Let's keep that runtime down a little bit, please. Uh, we don't need a three hour film for, for Hasbro toys fighting each other. We have Optimus Primal in here, so I'm already 100% invested. We have more old school looking Transformer designs. I, it, it, the trailer's great. I'm ready to go. June 23, we have a new Pixar movie. Elemental, I don't know what it's about. I just see the logo and it reminds me of Inside Out and uh, Soul. So it's probably another one in that style where it's playing off emotions. Maybe it's set in that same universe. Okay, been there, done that is, is kind of my first impression. But also Pixar has enough goodwill. I, I believe in them still, even though if they have faltered that uh, I'll definitely go watch it. <laughs> No. No. I don't care. June 30th, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. If only we could rewind time and get Harrison Ford back into like his 50s at least. The guy's pushing 80. He might be 80. He might be 100 for all I know, but he can still do it. And James Mangold is the guy to bring him there. Okay, this is the director of freaking Ford v. Ferrari and Logan. Even though Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull fuck exists i'm still in because i like indiana jones damn it i like a pulpy adventure now um it does kind of defeat the purpose when your pulpy adventure your buck rogers type is uh, geriatric unable to really move well on his own he's been in multiple plane crashes um but yeah we'll see <laughs> we'll see what they do uh seriously though i am kind of excited for this movie it could be a glorious train wreck, or it could be kind of cool. A nice send-off to the legend himself, Harrison Ford. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. That's right, we have two movies coming out this year that are two-parters. And both of them are freaking worth it, I think. Because Tom Cruise has not missed with these Mission Impossible movies. Sure, two. Sure, I'll give... Yeah, two's not good. But uh, yet it still kind of is at the same time. <laughs> it's so stupid, it's good. Um, I'm really excited for this. We, we got some cool movies coming out this year. Yeah, most of them are dumb big blockbuster sequels. There's been like 15 Mission Impossible movies. But Cruz keeps up in the ante. He keeps doing crazier and crazier stuff. He's holding his breath underwater for like eight minutes. He's jumping off of cliffs on motorcycles. He's hanging on the sides of planes. What's he gonna do this time? Tune into Dead Reckoning to find out. I will. I'm gonna be there day fun. I have my popcorn, I have my soda. Let's get some shit done. Greta Gerwig, director of Lady Bird and Little Women is back for Barbie. The teaser trailer hit and I have to say I'm kind of digging it. And no, it's not because I get to spend a couple hours watching Margot Robbie play dress up, although that is definitely a selling point. And no, it's not because Baby Goose also gets to play a role here. He's a good looking guy, what can I say? Uh, it's also because Greta Gerwig has proven she can do some tongue-in-cheek humor really well. She's got a little bit of a dark side to her when it comes to the comedy. 
and I think Barbie's gonna be right up her alley. Comedies are a dying breed in theaters, so if this is how we kind of start to bring them back through other pop culture references and icons, so be it. Bring on Barbie. I'm there. One word, four syllables. Oppenheimer, a Christopher Nolan vehicle. I don't need to say anything else. I'm there, full stop, moving on. July 28th not only marks the day the Marvels come out, but it's also a very special day for another reason. It's when all the collective idiots on YouTube can join forces, band together, and make 500 more thumbnails of Brie Larson looking like a dumbass and saying silly things in interviews and yelling at woke culture some more. I can't wait for the Marvels. It's going to be a great time online. Uh, the movie itself I don't care about. We'll see how the trailer looks. The first Captain Marvel movie was not good. It wasn't bad either. It was just kind of kind of lame. Kind of, I mean, kind of bad. It wasn't good. I'll say that. It wasn't good. Um, Brie Larson, she's fine. I, I don't care. I have, I have like nothing against her. I have nothing for her. She looks hot. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> it's been 500 years since the last Meg movie came out. August 4th. It's back. So is Jason Statham, ready to beat up some more giant megalodon shark things. The first movie was a massive disappointment for me. I guess I don't really know what I was expecting, but it wasn't what I got. So the Meg 2, not very interested in it, but hopefully it does something else. What, whatever that is, I don't know. I, I, please, please excite me, Meg. Please excite me because I love shark movies. And this should be a no-brainer. Sometime in August, there's also a new Ninja Turtles animated movie coming out called Mutant Mayhem. I know, like, nothing about this film. I've seen nothing about it other than Seth Rogen, I believe, is attached, which... Uh, that could be trouble, but it could also be good. I don't know. Like, I just don't know what to think about it. It is animated. Hopefully, it goes in the style of Into the Spider-Verse. I want them to go all in on the 2D animation. I want them to have a freaking ball with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I want to see them lively again. Not this disgusting Michael Bay monstrosity. That was just awful. Get back to the basics. Michelangelo's a party dude. Show me. Show me Donatello does machines. Show me Leonardo Lees and show me Raphael's still a prick. That's the movie I want. And then I can say Kawabunga. Instead of looking at that Michael Bay produced crap and saying Kawabung na. Kawabung na. Blue Beetle. August 18th. What are we even, what are we doing over there? What are we doing, DCU? What the hell is a Blue Beetle? When I think of superheroes, I think Spider-Man. I think Flash. I think Batman. I think Wonder Woman. Blue Beetle's like 800th on the list. No. No, Blue Beetle's not on the list. I don't even know who this character is. Now, that doesn't mean it's bad by any means. Look what happened with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Turned out to be one of my favorite superhero properties. Blue Beetle, I suppose, could do that as well. Let's be fair. It's just the DCU track record is horrible. And this is, again, kind of a shadow of the former Snyderverse stuff, I think. Um, so James Gunn hasn't really taken over, or I'm not sure where this sits in the rest of it. Maybe it'll be a good standalone movie. Maybe The Flash will be as well, or The Flash will somehow reset everything. I have no interest or desire, though, so far. Maybe that Blue Beetle trailer will win me over. Who's to say? Who's to know? October 6th, Sony's back with Craven the Hunter. Yeah! From the team that brought you Venom. And the team that brought you Venom 2, Let There Be Garbage. And the team that brought you Morbi shit comes Craven. Oh, I can't wait. We're eating good this year, fam. Craven is going to be the next Morbius. It's going to break the box office. It's going to break the world. I believe this movie stars Aaron Tiller Johnson. So go ahead and chalk him up as the next actor who's willing to throw away his credibility for a role. Can't wait. Can't wait for Craven. It's going to be terrible. October 13th sees an Exorcist sequel by David Gordon Green. I'm guessing he's going to do the same thing with this that he did with Halloween. Which is Halloween 2018. The sequel to Halloween, of course. So this film will probably be called The Exorcist. Hollywood naming is really stupid. I have no 
anything on this movie. The first Exorcist doesn't hold a special place in my heart at all. I appreciate it for sure, what it did for horror cinema. It definitely left its mark in culture. So yeah, well, I mean, whatever. Cool, I guess. Moving on. November 3rd sees Dune Part 2, the sequel to the movie that they didn't actually start shooting until the first one started making profit. A very bold move to, to make an entire movie without knowing if you're actually going to get a sequel, but setting up the entire thing as a two-parter. Like, nothing's resolved in Part 1. It's very much only half of a film. It's not like the end of the old Mario Brothers movie where Princess Daisy comes back and she's like, guys, we got a situation. No, 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 no. Dune is very much a full epic saga that needs to be completed. I like the first one. I'm also not on pins and needles though. When it arrives, I'll watch. Until that time, I'll bide it. I'll bide my time. <sighs> the Hunger Games, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The ballad of another stupid prequel story that doesn't need to be told and probably shouldn't have been because I read this book. I did the audio. I did the audio. Still still effort. Still counts. It's not good. It's, it's a very lame story about the rise of Snow. President Snow, the bad guy. Yeah, he gets, he gets the storyline now. Um, and how he kind of is involved in the early Hunger Games and how he changes them and, and becomes this powerful leader that we all know and fear. It's not enjoyable to read a book about an ass. And he is. He's a pompous jerk the whole time who has a, a love interest because we had to throw that crap in there for the youngins. Uh, and for me, of course. I'm just a sucker for that stuff. It's a lame book. I expect the movie's going to be lame as well. They'll, they'll probably throw a ton of money at it, though. Make it bigger and larger than life. I like the Hunger Games movies, and I like the book. So, n no excitement. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. He's so hot right now. Timothy Chalamet. And he's also Willy Wonka in the movie Wonka. November 15th. I don't care. In the slightest. We still have the original right over there. It's just over there. You can watch it. And that Johnny Depp thing, we can leave that away. Why are we doing this at all is I guess my question. It's not a story that's like begging to be retold again and again. Just keep the musical where it's at. We have other things we can do. And thus we end the awkward year of DCU with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Hopefully for the sequel, we pick one tone and stick with it. One overarching theme. Instead of doing a comedy for some times, and then a romance for another time, and then a huge epic adventure movie. And then for some reason a Pitbull song comes on, where he's doing a terrible version of Toto's Africa. That first Aquaman movie is such a disaster, such a train wreck. I don't care about the sequel at all. Just let's get past 2023 for DCU. Like pretend this is a wash year all around. I'll go to these movies. Um, hopefully I'll be entertained. Worst case scenario, they're sucky and we move on. Best case scenario, they're actually decent standalone movies. And we can look back on them and say, you know what? They did a good job here with what they had. They did a good job. That Jason Momoa, he sure knows how to quip. Permission to come aboard? Granted. New Ghostbusters movie, December 20th, a follow-up to that slow-moving, boring, over-dramatized piece of crap that came out a couple years ago. <laughs> I'm being a little bit harsh. I was so indifferent about the last Ghostbusters movie, I didn't think it was good. Okay, I thought it was way too heavy on the nostalgia. It forgot that it was a comedy. All of it was so pandering and just kind of lame and I don't ever want to watch it again. Hopefully the sequel brings back the fun, the quippy banter, the jokes. Honestly, it's not going to. Because Ghostbusters 1, specifically, 2, I still enjoy. I think it's good, but lightning in a bottle. And that reason is entirely because of the chemistry these four guys had in the original and the creativity they worked with in the 80s. It's just a perfect comedy through and through. I don't care about the new Ghostbusters at all, which is really sad to say, but also kind of good to say that because we don't need to make everything a franchise and it's clear not everything should be. So that's most of 2023 from the big guys. I'm sure I missed one or two. I apologize, you know, I'm a one-man operation over here. 
running fast, running loose, just trying to get you the info as I see it. I think it's a solid year. We have a solid lineup of sequels and remakes and uh, mostly just sequels. <laughs> it's like sequel central. I know there's gonna be a ton of stuff from A24 coming out, Screen Gems and other smaller studios that, well, I mean, A24 is getting pretty damn big lately. They're, they're acquiring a lot of films. It's gonna be a good year. I think it's gonna be better than 2022, which did end up having a surprising amount of solid flicks. So yeah, every year we get some stuff. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You liking what you're seeing here? Are you sick of all of this and you just wanna get some smaller stuff? It'll be there too, I assure you. Um, comment, like the video if you had a good time. Please just freaking beat on that subscription button until it works. I need you to stay here. I post tons of movie content each and every week. The more the merrier. A big episode, an important episode. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.